Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surfboard review is on the RNF 96 by Lost Surfboards. We're here at BSR Surf Resort, getting a few waves, running the Lost RNF 96 through the paces. You're gonna love this episode. We've got Nate Yeomans joining us for the review. Sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. So Nate, stoked to have you on the show. It's always fun to do a Lost review and have you on the show breaking down board equipment with me. So RNF 96. What made this model come back to life again? Maybe you could just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I think anyone our age and above would remember the 5.5, 19 and a quarter movie um, that Matt and Mike came out with, which really highlighted this board. Really was a springboard for Biolis to become, I think, globally known as a shaper. But now 25 years and a board that was really what made Matt kind of got him to where he is now. It, talking to him it just seemed ideal to relaunch it tweak a couple things um, add in what we've learned since 96 to now um, main ones just user friendly the old ones used to be really you see the old ones they're like so thin mm. um, machines have come into play so he's able to mass produce them I think and iron out the imperfections that hand shapes used to do I see a lot of um, and test a lot of boards that have a similar outline as uh, RNF 96 yep. round nose fish um, so shorter, uh, more hybrid like wider nose. Most of them have a wider tail. This one's quite a bit pulled in. Some of the things that I noticed um, on the RNF 96 that I really liked a lot. I'm riding a stock, both boards are stock 5.3, coming in at 26 liters. I'm five foot nine and 165 pounds. And pushing these boards in overhead surf, I couldn't believe the versatility, mm. the hold and the traction totally. on these boards. And for me, usually I'm riding um, these round nose fish type boards super short because they like to catch up in this area, right? But there's something about the way Matt shaped this. I know it has a little bit more entry rocker than most round nose fish type boards. Yeah. So I felt like I could put it on rail and hold that turn, car front side or back side, and then it wasn't catching up here as often or as likely as most round nose fish boards would catch. So that was unique by design there. And the other thing I really experienced was when I was pushing these boards in overhead surf, where most um, boards that have a similar outline struggle is in waves that are overhead. Yeah, They're usually going so fast that they're kind of hard to manage and control. And that's when I start getting it to catch up here or doing weird bogs where the water floods the deck somewhere. So for me, with a straighter outline from here to like right here, or let's say right here so the guys can see it on camera, the board's fast, it's carrying that speed and glide, but because it's so straight from here to here, I kind of felt like at times when the waves were bigger, I wasn't riding a 5.3. It felt more like I had enough rail line to put the board on rail and it was like feeling like a 5.5. Five. Yeah. Were you feeling anything like that? And tell us about the size of your board. Yeah, so mine's a stock 5.6. I'm just about six feet tall and 185 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's a little over 29 liters, which is basically what I ride in the shortboard. Um, it's five six. I lost. I usually ride a six L, so six inches shorter. Um, and I think one of the main components that makes this board so versatile is it's really got the width of the tail is about the width of, of a shortboard. Mm. A lot of the, especially 25 years ago, a lot of the uh, fish boards had a really wide fish tail sure. so it's fast down the line but in bigger surf it would kind of just wash out and it wouldn't have that hold and bite mm -hmm. um, and i was able to ride a variety of fins these hp fins your guys's fins i really liked um, and then in bigger surf i actually put in a thruster mayhem's future fin the largest and it was insane i mean i felt like i could turn and push as hard as i wanted like on a shortboard now nate you kind of scratch the surface on fins and for me, I started on the light speed with the HP Twins, no stabilizer, and I couldn't get off the thing. Rad. So fun. And I was pushing it in overhead surf. Yeah. And what I saw is the fins are kind of clustered. So the side fins are back a little bit compared to most boards that would fit the RNF um, category. Yeah. Right? So when I saw that they were pushed further back, I said, I, I bet this board will go good purely as a twin, put the HP Twins in got out there and I was having so much fun. I was like, man, I don't even want to go twin plus trailer because I kind of knew that it would go good with the twin plus trailer setup. And 
One of the things I noticed is that when you take a stabilizer out the back of a twin fin and the board's not really designed as a twin, it has a tendency to slide and be a bit harder to control and then throw any kind of wave size with way more speed that you get from the wave itself and it's just trouble. Yeah. But I had incredible hold. I felt like the board was projecting. It was um, going top to bottom. It was fitting in tight little pockets. And then, you know, transitioning from the light speed into the PU Poly yeah. with the Twin Plus trailer, I just couldn't do anything wrong on the board. It was having, I was having so much fun. Yeah. But tell us about where you started yep. and the different fin configurations that you ran and how they felt underfoot for you. My original one was FCS. When Matt made me the board going into when he was going to launch it, it had FCS. So I just went with the MR with the trailer, which I know well. I really like that fin. Mm. Um, it worked It worked great from the get-go. I did take the fin, the trailer fin out at one point and kind of running down the line beach break waves. Mm -hmm. And it was rad. The, how not having even that little trailer, the difference it makes, freed up the back. Mm. And it just flowed down the line. Sure. And it was having a blast. And then in more trestle waves, I really like the trailer, just a little added stability. Sure. Um, but with that tail being pulled in and the way the fin placement is, I was able to ride as just a twin, rode as a twin with a trailer and even a thruster fin setup, mm -hmm. and they all worked well. Yeah. There wasn't like one that was like, I think they were all in the good category. Right. Um, on the T1s, which I know well when I got this board with the Future, I think for a twin fin, in bigger surf, the, the fin kind of can overflex, being that I'm 185 and a bigger guy. In small stuff, I like the whippy, snappy feel. Yeah. So then I tried the IPAs, which is a glass fin, just to have more hold that it's a bigger fin. Yep. And I really like that um, that it had a stiffer fin and it wasn't overflexing. Yep. And I was able to turn and push and it wasn't laying over. Mm -hmm. um, and then you showed me your fin, which is even a bigger base, bigger fin. And in waves, it had the speed. I rode it just as this without, I usually ride trailer fin. And without it, it, it was, I was blown away at just how much speed. And I could go up and crank my turn and it never like slid out. Mm. It had hold that it had the cool, lively feel of a twin fin. Mm. And so it's been fun going so many different fins from FCS to Future. I dove more into future with trying different fins because I have them. Yep. And uh, it was rad just being able to mess around in different waves, different spots. Like I said, they all, I liked them all. I think overall, I really liked these, just the twin fin. Mm. Bigger surf, I really liked the thruster actually. Yep. And then in small stuff, I would say these ones because they have a cool whippy feel. Yeah. Um, just in smaller waves though. So that was kind of my take on all the different fins. Sick. And now, when I went to the PU Poly, I switched to a Twin Plus trailer. This is a prototype twin. It's a pivot twin, pretty upright. I was running this little stabilizer. And just putting the stabilizer, you talked about having something to push off of and give it that extra drive off the bottom and more pivot. Yep. Compared to even the HP twins, I felt like it had the pivot. But as soon as I put the stabilizer in, and I felt this more or less at BSR Surf Resort, it was like a whole nother level of squirt off the bottom. And in the ocean, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know which one I would choose, light speed or PU poly. Usually I'm like EPS epoxy, hmm. especially on boards in one to four foot. Yep. But riding it purely as a twin fin with the HP twins, this rail is going to even be more engaged compared to the light speed. Yeah. So I feel like guys that want to dabble a little bit more with twin fins, the PU Poly will have a more engaged rail, not so topical because it's not that EPS epoxy foam. And I think for guys that want to really get into a Twin Plus trailer feel and kind of dabble in twin fins, the board's ultra forgiving. Yeah, It fits in a tight pocket because of its size and design. And the last thing for me on the board attributes was the bottom contours. So it's running single to double with some V behind the, the um, almost like on the back of the third fin. Yep. And I love how Matt talks about the tail rocker being somewhat relaxed, low tail rocker on the center line. Yep. But because of the accelerated V out the tail, he's actually creating rail curve and giving it more traction. Yeah. And I experienced that not only 
with the Twin Plus trailer with also the HP Twins. And then I was pretty blown away when you and I were surfing one day and Lowers was well overhead and you were rocking the thruster setup. Yep. For it being so clustered, it kind of wouldn't make sense as a thruster. Right. But I was like, I want to try it. There's bigger waves. Let's see how it feels. And right off the get-go, I was like, this thing's money. Yeah. It paddled well. It was like two feet overhead. Yep. It had hold. And I felt like even seeing some of the review, it's thrown a lot of spray. Yep. But that single to double concave to V off the tail in this little rocket ship RNF 96, it just, I don't know. He calibrated it, I think, perfectly. Yep. I was really blown away on the on the twins. I don't usually go just straight twins. Mm. And the wider base, uh, I get why you like it so much after that. I usually stay away from it. Right. Uh, and it's fun learning something new and trying something new. All right, now the last thing for me is I always want to put a board in a category. Okay. Right, I'm calling it a one board quiver, best in one to six foot surf. When I talk about one foot surf, I don't, I don't believe I've groveled on it by any means. However, putting it in one foot, two foot punchy beach break, riding it at BSR, even though that's more of like a shoulder high wave, yep. it's quick, it's hollow, it fits in that pocket real quick. And I loved how the board responded there. And then pushing it in overhead surf at a point break with more open face, where there's a lot that could go wrong from turn to turn, yeah. it kind of blew my mind. Yeah. So one board quiver for me. Yeah, that, I think that's spot on. I know I've ridden it in one foot waves. I really liked it as a twin and it had a ton of speed. I've ridden it well over head waves, punchy beach breaks, kind of barreling stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a one board quiver, like you said, that you could really go to Hawaii, throw it in your board bag. If you're on the East Coast, here on the West Coast, that's sure. a variety of waves, yep. that's three different coasts. Mm -hmm. And this board, I was blown away at how well it handles most of the time a fish and small stuff. It's, you kind of just pair it with that. Yeah. But I was really blown away in the bigger waves, yep. uh, how much hold it had. And you could really throw that in, take it on a trip, as your primary board, a backup board, yep. but I would highly suggest it. And I don't think I had a bad surf on it in so many different surf conditions. Sure. And I've been riding this board almost a year now. Wow. So sizing it, yep. that's always important for our community. Mine being a stock 26 liters, I like 25 to 27. That's kind of my volume range. And at 26, I kind of feel like that's right in the middle and going up a little bit extra in foam, maybe a half a liter for me, all it had to do was change the construction. Yeah. From PU Poly to that light speed, I feel like it kind of floats like 26 and a half liters. Yeah. Do you agree? What, what do you recommend? So I never rode the light speed, but I do, the epoxy is gonna be more buoyant. Mine's 29 and a quarter, and I usually ride between 28 and 30 liters. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of in the middle, a little bit above. Yep. Um, and I would suggest if you're looking at the board, go to the store, put it under your arms. Like epoxy is gonna feel a little more buoyant yep. than your poly, um, but either version, I think you're good to go and you'll have a blast on this board. Agreed. So guys, RNF 96 is a favorite of mine for 2021. It's legit. If it's not on your radar, it should be. Nate, thanks for joining us on the show. I know. Helping me break down the boards. It's always a blast having you. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the RNF 96. Special shout out thanks to Matt Biolas for sending in these boards for review. Look, if you like the show, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, and give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.